Dumelang and hello from wherever you may be watching this from and a warm welcome to Indomitable Hohontlajang. On this episode, we will be reflecting on the 2021 budget speech. I have been trying to avoid giving uh, my reflections on the budget speech because, you know, most of them are actually not different from things I've said before. You know, uh, but I might as well just share them here because this is a new platform for me through this channel. Um, so it might be things you've heard before from me or from other people and just a few things because, you know, I only have a few minutes on this platform. So I won't touch on everything because a budget speech is quite broad, as you can imagine. Now, as you know, few days ago recently, the Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Dr. Tapelo Matseka, uh, presented the budget. And, you know, we were expecting a lot of sad news, obviously, because we are in the middle of a pandemic. This is something that nobody expected. We could not have predicted. And we're all feeling the effects of the pandemic. And it's... Um, so this that we are expecting to see deficits, some setbacks and regression in certain industries and in certain sectors um, and most of them uh, because of the turbulent times that we are currently still in at the moment in 2021 with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So I'd say some of these things we, we did expect um, to hear a little bit of uh, uh, sad news which is okay. First thing I'm going to do is have a cup of tea because this is an intense topic and when I'm having intense discussions or when I'm trying to relax, I like to have tea. So step one. Step two, I need to like really emphasize this. I am not an expert here i am sharing my opinions i'm not an economist i haven't worked in that field so please don't come after me don't come at me don't drag me naked eye observations from my line of work from being a Motswana, yonda Motswana, from conversations not expert opinions okay and then the third thing that i must emphasize is that I am speaking in my personal capacity. This is not official from the organizations that I represent or that I work for or any boards that I may sit in. They are not affiliated with the sentiments I'm about to share. This is Ho Kwan Zhang just giving her own opinions, okay? So please don't misquote me or quote me inappropriately or whatever. Just don't, okay? All right, good. I'm going to start up with the positive things because so I'm going to start with the positive things uh, that I'm happy um, that uh, the, the minister touched on um, or budget speaking. Santa, I'm really happy to hear about digitization. As a young person, as somebody who's also actively interested and keenly interested in anything to do with information, technology, communications, it always excites me when I hear about technology and digitization, you know, because also we're moving towards being in the fourth industrial revolution. I know we are so far away from getting there, but I still believe that it's important as a standing commitment that our government keeps reaffirming its commitment to the digitization plan as part of our overall transformation strategy um, using digitization as the engine to deliver us to that transformation to those um, vision 2036 pillars and the Botswana so I'm really excited to hear about the digitization plans 
uh, the e-visa portal where you can apply for a visa electronically things that we've been seeing in other countries and really highly efficient and effective so i'm really happy that's going to be happening here i'm really happy also to hear about the digitization of schools um, from standard five all the way to form five and it is really my hope for harbuakase we will ensure full capacity of the schools in Khaboroni and in faraway places where they have the full capacity and access to the same resources when it comes to um, ITC and learning about information technology. We really need to stop this huge gap between Banaban and School Mukhaboroni, Lewasatsena Mukhaboroni in terms of uh, technological skills and so on and so forth. I'm happy that the minister mentioned gender-based violence. Of course, it wasn't um, a lot or at length, but um, as an activist of uh, ending GBV, it gives me pleasure when I, I, I see that slowly this is becoming a high priority on the political agenda because that's ultimately what we want. And we know that in previous years, we only hear about GBV during the 16 days of activism. So each and every time any other minister or the president in different platforms mention GBV, for me as an activist, is a win because it means we are achieving or getting to where we want to ultimately um, arrive at. I was also happy with the government's plans to reduce the wage bill. This has been said so many times over the years and we've had recommendations, see, so our International Monetary Fund is our World Bank about our unsustainable, uh, huge uh, government wage bill. So it's pleasing that now concrete commitments are actually being made uh, towards that. So I hope that in the next budget speech, now the minister will be reporting that 50% of vacant positions and other mechanisms to reduce the government wage bill. How far are we with that? And not another political statement. Um, also happy to have a lot of people who are in the world. Because the people who are in the world are in the world. And we know that on average, we earn very little. So the people who are in the world. So I'm also happy about the increase in budget allocation to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Obviously, this becomes very important because we are in the middle of a pandemic. So I'm happy that um, Ministry of Health budget has increased by 2.2% uh, from uh, last year's um, uh, budget allocation, even though it's still not the largest share, you know? I mean, I don't know when or whether we should talk about how the Ministry of Health and Wellness did not receive the largest share of the budget, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic or defense received the largest share yeah even last year okay well you get the picture though so um that is that but we have to be grateful that um it has increased by 2.2 um percent i'm also happy that operators it is okay i'm also happy that the minister reported that operators reduced the mobile broadband prices by 55% and increased the volumes of data bundles by up to 200%. Okay, I'm just going to be the first to say that I really do not feel these changes. I really don't. I still feel data is expensive. Eadura. Is expensive. And you know, that's not even the worst part. The worst part is that the internet is not reliable and we are not getting value for our money. Whether you're looking at internet at home, it is just way too expensive. And it being expensive means that we are missing out on a huge opportunity 
of e-commerce, you know, simply because, you know, you do apps and all of that mode, and they're not going to succeed. Nobody's going to be using them, all my friends, my social. So we are missing out on a huge e-commerce um, opportunity. I feel that the government needs to really put pressure on operators because they are accessing internet and also really ensuring we are getting value for our money because we are so there's still more that we can do here and open up more opportunities. It was very interesting that uh, the press, uh, the minister rather mentioned that Botswana is one of the most competitive countries in Africa in terms of mobile data pricing. Really? 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 Okay, maybe you're right, but it's still expensive, okay? It's still expensive. It needs to be um, cheaper, comparably, level Kenya and all of those countries. Now, I'm going to shift a little bit to talk about some things that I still find a little bit challenging um, when I was reading the bias speech. And again, I said this, I'm not an expert. I'm not giving an expert opinion either. This is just a very light conversation around uh, some of the things that came up from the budget speech, okay? So, a sip. Let's first talk about is part and limit. We sorry, I'm starting to think that maybe, just maybe, when we sorry, review is part and limit is part and limit have been under review for a while this budget speech the previous one the one before that you know and i think at some point the review needs to have conclusion and recommendations and way forward on what we are going to do is part Lily Meat. I actually read the budget speech here this year. Kabala ya mwako no hete. Ke bala wa mwako o hamarao haone. Ewe ke wano are me mo budget speech in zone. So tene nse lo we are reviewing is pardon limit. Something that's very important and timely. But my issue is that at some point, this review needs to have conclusion. Needs to come to an end and there needs to be a comprehensive uh, way forward whether it's about restructuring uh, changing uh, the, the the overall mechanism you know is completely doing away with either of them but we really need to move please can we not have more budget speeches of is part and limit uh, under review okay uh the other thing that I wanted to talk about is um, obviously the review of uh, Paris Details and state-owned enterprises. This made me really happy. It really did. And I'm sure I'm not the only one because we actually have a lot of these um, Paris Details and state-owned enterprises and we've always wondered are all of them effective? Are we seeing results from them? Are they really performing when it comes to delivering on their mandate? Uh, is there no overlap in the activities that they carry out? And most importantly, why is the government still footing the bill for expensive secretariats and really expensive Offices. So I was really happy that once more the minister mentioned uh, the critical and timely review of Zone, um, the, the parastata state owned enterprises, particularly reflecting on their governance, uh, their performance, their outcome, the overall uh, landscape, Zone, and also to avoid wastage, which is a really important factor. I think one thing I would have wished to hear more from the minister um, just for continuity is that I noticed when I was reading last year's um, budget speech where he had mentioned that there is a, a cabinet um, subcommittee undertake that comprehensive review of the parastatals uh, landscape. I, I guess what I would have wished uh, to hear very concretely, give the specific recommendations 
that are coming from that subcommittee because it's been operating, I assume, ever since the last budget speech. And also hearing um, some recommendations on which uh, parastatals are going to be closed because that was also part of the terms of reference where they'll give recommendations on which um, state-owned enterprises, parastatals uh, need to be um, closed. So I would have appreciated um, hearing a little bit more on what um, that uh, cabinet subcommittee has been doing in the last year with regards to this. Um, I guess maybe one of the recommendations in Elohanor who developed the uh, rationalization strategy, which is going to cover all uh, parish state health. I just really wish for this exercise, see, I will review what the parastate health and state-owned enterprises and see which ones are ineffective, uh, which ones have an overlapping mandate, uh, restructuring governance and closing down some of them is not going to be an expensive, unnecessarily ex expensive and costly exercise. Because our problem is that Hello, I want to learn about the rata who simula solo sesi shatera arisimu rise le kalane le shay le li dongo bana kwa a magalana ali a berega ari iraju office itse dongo bana kwa a du office itse le dia toka hal. I believe this is um, an exercise that can be carried out without being unnecessarily um, expensive. Because again, remember the key here. We are trying to reduce wastage. The government is bleeding money. So I think um, uh, the, 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 the way in which we carry out this exercise will speak a lot about our commitment to reducing uh, wastage. The other thing um, that I have been thinking of is that some of these parastatals, when you look at um, their mandate, they should actually be self-sufficient and self-sustaining. They should be able to pay for their own secretariats. These are some of them uh, innovation institutions, research institutions, or institutions that loan, give out loans, you know. So if you give out loans, you should be able to collect back your money, you know, and sustain yourself. If you're an institute that carries some sort of innovation, research, development, and so on and so forth, you should be able to do crowdsourcing for your core funding through doing that research or uh, statistical work, uh, development, innovation for other institutions, other, uh, either for other government departments or for private sector and so on and so forth. But you should be able to do that crowdfunding and that uh, uh, fundraising for yourself and sustain your secretariat at the very least. That is just my thinking on how some of these uh, should be operating. I've also seen that some of the grants it's selling already the Mobotswana. Some of these parastatals actually apply for those grants. So they compete for those grants. Research or development or innovation or technology. A parastatal also applies for that same grant, you know. And obviously they have a higher chance of them getting it. So if they're able to access grants, if they're able to get um, uh, work from other departments why does the government need to now be sustaining them it is not sustainable to have governments paying um, uh, secretariats so i think parastatal state-owned enterprises they need to find a way to be self-sufficient self-reliant and financing their core which is the secretariat you know and um, those who have an overlapping mandate those who are ineffective, they're not delivering, no results, no outcomes, they simply need to be closed down. And the very last point on this one, for many of these, I feel the big problem that we have is governance. Serious governance deficits. And in as much as we're going to have some of these or many of these um, parastatals still operating even after the review um, this committee. One of the things that needs to happen is that we need to rectify the governance deficits within these parastatals and state-owned entities. It is the reason why they are underperforming, is the reason why they're not producing results, they're not contributing to the overall transformation agenda because of governance. So 
even moving past this, we need to review governance as part of the restructuring Yonaya Dispara State House. Otherwise, Haritu Sisepe will still go back there. Now, um, <clears throat> the other thing, um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so basically many of these uh, 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 parastatals and state-owned enterprises need to move to, we, to being fully commercialized. <clears throat> now, towards the end, now I'm concluding my last points. Now I'm going to wrap up my reflections, my non-expert, non-official reflections, and I'm going to just give some of the things that I felt should have been included in the budget speech. The first one is about corruption. Botswana loses a lot of money to corruption because corruption is just rife. In Botswana, in Africa, it's a huge problem. We cannot not talk about such a huge problem, you know? Apparently, the amount of money that African countries lose to corruption is more than the total development aid that they receive. So corruption is such a huge problem that I think needs to really come up and be high on the political agenda. And what we need to hear, Hari how much money did we lose to corruption? That is very important. We also need to hear how much money did we recover from corruption. We need to hear about as establishing asset recovery mechanisms because I hear about prosecutions here and there that you know don't even go that far either way. We hear about oversight mechanisms that ensure what hawana corruption. But where is the asset recovery mechanism? Where is the plan to recover what we have lost to corruption? And we need to also even just technically be able to see what this part of the GDP we are losing, costing us due to corruption. How much are we losing in terms of human and social development? How much are we losing economically? How much are we using in all of um, cross-cutting sectors? What we need to understand comprehensively is how much corruption is costing the country. Because But we need to see very vividly where Hane Sika Madia Kana Kana are losing to corruption. Botswana Kabale Hakai Madia are losing in in terms of human and social development, economic indicators, transformation agenda, Vision 2036, NDP 11. How much is corruption robbing us? I think it will be very important uh, to acknowledge that we have this problem. Um, of course, the government will reaffirm its commitment to fighting corruption and all of that. But we need to really know how much is costing us and what is the plan for recovering what we have lost. Asset recovery mechanism. Because we don't just want goodwill speeches and nice speeches when we are fighting corruption. Yay. Then what? The other thing that I think is important is just, you know, reflecting on the debt ratio of Botswana. What Botswana is being built versus what it's collecting and also reflecting on whether we are collecting dividends from our investment. Why am I saying this is an important point? I think it's time that um, government. And by doing so, it means we need to reflect on some of the uh, things that we enjoy, such as free access to education and health care and so on and so forth. What am I saying by that? Do we still need to say education is free to all, even to those who can afford to pay for education? Should we still be saying that? everywhere so ya free for free for
king ke le go go ntse jang ke sonse re ke cleaning e be ke sa duele sepe me ke na le bokgoni jwa gore nka duelela e e e e service ya botso go ke receive e be go tlo go thele ga ke duele the same way le le bo yo le gore go ngene gana bokgoni jwa gore o ka duelela bonga ka gore ha ne le gore re ha thusa re le sechaba gore mente maite kwa ga go e re ba ba khwanang ba bana le bokgoni ba duela ne go ka thusa particularly the, the specific institutions to enhance their capacities the schools right now would not just be waiting for ministry gore o ba hemadi they would use the money that they generate from the school fees for rehabilitate the dikolo go reka di printara e go khwana go photocopia and all of those things you know to supplement or complement what the government is already doing you know the same way nagetsene go um a government primary school ne re na re ntsa development fees le gore ke tsone di thusa go 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 uplift a school or tsenya di pavement and all of these things you know so imagine if baba ne bana le bokgone e ba khone go duela school fees go primary go secondary school go itelleng go tertiary go thusa go romente go moimola morwalo wa gore mongwe le mongwe a be gore menta mo duela Imagine the clinic go mpeno gona kwa clinic ne ke le clinic um 2 weeks ago ke ha ile gore i was with my mother ona tsontse gore a tsewe madi e be go te ga gona di pampiri tse di tse ngaka di filang ha motsa madi and we returned simply because of that ga bana la ha le printer ba tsontse gore ba emele another clinic gore ne yone ba tsitsetsa but imagine if they could generate revenue from go duela sa batho le gore bana le bokgone go duela ha ba tsile bonga keng e be le gore madi a ke ona ile gore di clinic di khwana gore di oketse the capacity to serve the nation ha ba je tetswa from the ministry of health and wellness is to complement or to supplement already what they are generating as a clinic I think this is something that we really need to consider. It actually reminds me of this thing yeah all these pension what why should everyone who is over 65 receive um old age pension even those who have a lot of money I long gore ke pension e ba tsang from di tiro go ne ba berekela teng you see right now let's say minister o tswa mo tirong o go Uh, ha tsomo tirong over 65 wo go hiwa tandabala e bo mme bo nkuku le bone ba hiwa gona le gore yo e leng gore kwa na bere ka teng o na le pension e o tswalang a ska e hiwa gore yone ka ba ene e be yo keletswa mang nkuku gore ba khona go bona pension e botoka i think these are some of the things we really need to consider um to help our government uh, to mitigate um the cause of uh, of uh, financing these uh, institution or maybe rather these essential services for rona re ka dira jang go thusa and then finally about collecting the dividend i've always been concerned for why is it rena le manane o amantsintsi which is good go thusa banana bomme and so on and so forth and rena re utwa ka madi a ileng gore a dule for manane wa ba ha re ngere utwa ka madi a ileng gore a boetse mo le bokosong la ga gore mente we are not hearing about government collecting a dividend on these um, uh, initiatives and these grants and so on and so forth because the idea is that if you're funded to do a business uh, you should contribute to the gdp growth of a country diversification of the economy hire people and all of that and most importantly repay you know imagine if a bomb mine say can all of that were collecting money back from my dear bank say they wouldn't always now they wouldn't be relying 100% on the government revenue for the funding ministry because they'll be collecting the dividend from the initiatives say the economic empowerment that they've given out so i want to know genuinely asking why are we not collecting dividend on our investments really botswana kana na hanga bua betso ga enka e ka ema bogolang ha ke bua ka di khantsa le ha tshe ka matshelo a batho because i am very passionate about this but maba ke na go and i need to stop here for now as i said these are not expert opinions these are not official opinions i'm not representing any organization or my organization or any entity that i am a part of i just wanted to trigger 
some discussions on nation building and development so please do share uh, your comments feedback suggestions do like this video and share it subscribe to our channel and make sure you tune in to our episodes every week right here on my official facebook page and other platforms until next time keep it locked with indomitable Ho Hon Zhang.